May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, thy Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Again, I'd like to wish my mother-in-law a happy 80th birthday. Yes. She has been in my life since I was 15 years old, or maybe 16, which I'm not now, okay? But I'm 57, so that's how long we've known each other. She's a blessing. Clap again. Okay. Amen. Amen. The primary aim of First Thessalonians is to encourage Jesus' believers, that's us, to continue to progress in your faith. But in addition, I like to interpret it as threefold, not only as a call for us to believe in a persistent faith, but to also embrace joy and commit to doing just a little bit of good in this old crazy world. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, you know what? My husband could really preach, but I like to talk. So you have to help me, okay? Now. Because, you know, I can't, like, whoop and do all those things he was. And plus, I don't want to scare you Presbyterians. Okay. Now, at that time, the church in Thessalonica was disoriented by affliction and confused about the end times and false teachings. They longed for the return of Christ and needed comfort in the hard times they were facing. Well, Paul sent Timothy to check in on the Thessalonians. Try saying Thessalonians over and over when your teeth are crazy, okay? Thessalonians, to strengthen them in the midst of their persecutions. He reminds them that they should, they should expect, expect suffering because of their faith in Christ. It should never be a surprise, or worse yet, Cause them to buckle and stop living in faith. Living in faith. What does it mean to live in faith? We discussed the importance of faith a few Sundays ago when I was challenged by Paul talking all conservatively and stuff. But we explored Paul's epistle. I, for one, am happy that I can only imagine the faith of my ancestors. My Angelo said, remember this? I am the dream and the hope of the enslaved. Oh, y'all don't hear me now. I am the dream of the hope of the enslaved. In her poem, Still I Rise, that is faith. Hebrews 11 and 1 states, faith is the substance of things hoped for and what? The evidence of things unseen. I am the things hoped for. And this black 57-year-old female is standing in this pulpit as the evidence of things unseen. Amen. Now, Layla Akita look her up, a Ghanaian-born writer and founder of Smart Youth Volunteers Foundation, work with me, and the author of the book, Think Greatly. I just like that title, Think Greatly. She boldly states, freedom is fearless faith. Freedom is fearless faith. Lord, make me lose myself. Freedom is fearless faith. You know, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom am I going to fear? The Lord is the strength and the joy of my life. For whom should I be afraid? Fearless faith is the utmost confidence in God. Now, while doing some research, I read that some wonderful person on the brilliant Internet you know, guys, you know you research on the internet, too. While dining at a Chinese restaurant, work with me, got a fortune cookie that said, deep faith eliminates fear. Deep faith 
eliminates fear. My fortune cookies always say something like, you know, you're going to meet some tall, nice person. It really narrows it down, you know. Faith is hope. Faith is freedom. And faith is fearless. Fear imprisons, faith liberates. Fear paralyzes, faith empowers. Fear disheartens, faith encourages. Fear sickens, faith heals. Fear makes useless. Faith also makes serviceable. Bear Grillis said, both faith and fear may sail into your harbor, but only allow faith to drop anchor. Let me hear you say amen. amen. Okay, let me go back to our text now. I got off on a little tangent. I like to do that, like right now. Okay. Now, while reading 1 Thessalonians 6 and 13, I find great encouragement in that passage. The tone is so inviting. I have been trading males with Reverend Chaplain Annie over there, who I adore. I'm just not trying to get you to sing for me. I just love you. <laughs> and she says she felt joy while reading this passage. I felt a little bit vindicated because I felt the same thing. I was thought for a minute, is this Paul? Do you guys know about Paul? He's happy. He's happy. You know, I have had some issues with Paul, but one cannot help but be excited when we read the powerful words about such good things as faith, love, and encouragement. Amen. Those are good things. Faith, love, and encouragement. He is looking forward to returning to let Thessalonica. I mean, he is really looking forward to seeing these folks with a very weird name. In verse 11, he says, Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. He can't wait to get there. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. That's love. Is that love, church? That's joy. By Paul displaying so much joy in his words, he is conveying that we too must embrace joy. Oh, y'all don't hear me now. You must embrace joy. I know there are times in our lives that we think that we believe we just can't go on. I know I've been there. I mean those times where you don't think you can get through another day. Oh, you act like you good. You, you good? You not had those days where you act like you can't get through another day? If one more crazy person emails me? <laughs> Amen, Leah. When my husband of 36 years passed away two years ago, and then I followed that loss with a life-altering stroke last year. That took most of my singing voice. I thought, will I ever, will I ever know pure joy again? Hmm. Then I was scared to appear too happy in public. Because too happy meant that I wasn't suffering enough. I wasn't grieving enough. I wasn't wearing black every Sunday. Oh, but I dared to feel joyful. I then thought, surely Jesus must have had a good belly laugh now and then. I'm sure Peter told some good jokes. So often, so often, so often, including me, I'm guilty of this, we discuss so much black pain, so much black pain, so much black suffering, but there's a lot of black joy there's a lot of joy in overcoming. There's a lot of joy in being. There's a lot of joy 
and just standing here. I'm sure Harriet Tubman must have had moments where she doubled over in joyful laughter. Socrates, he wasn't black, but that's okay. <laughs> Often found humanity just outright funny. And I'm sure if there had been an Instagram or a Twitter or something like that, Martin Luther King would have shared a funny pic or two just to prove that he was a human because humans laugh. Humans feel joy. Humans can and should embrace joy. If there's a song in your heart, sing it, even if it's out of tune. I'll pray for you. If there's love and joy in your soul, show it. Show it. If there are dreams in your mind, chase them. If there are dreams in your mind, chase them. Your life is meant for living, my brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ. Your life is meant for living. Don't be afraid to show the real you. Amen. Amen, Amen lights. Paul calls the Thessalonians to stand firm and remain steadfast on the gospel in these disorienting times. The call for us is the same, to stay confident and hopeful because the truths of the gospel are unshaken. Let us practice, let us practice an insistent, a persistent, and a consistent faith. Let us seek joy. Let us be joy. It's okay to laugh. Y'all looking at me real serious now. I just said it's okay. It's okay to feel. It's okay to sing even if off key. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay, my brothers and sisters and siblings. It's okay to smile. Your joyous smile may give someone the inspiration to face another day. Amen. I've been there. How many times has it been a stranger, a giant, and comes up to you and just smiles? There was a man, I'm going to tell you my um, supermarket life, because people just talk to me, okay? <laughs> there was this guy, and I had on some African earrings. He said, I love black people. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to read this man. But, you know, he was, he was about... 80 years old or so, you know. So I said, all right, it's okay. Live, be calm, be calm. And he went and commenced to saying how much he loved the resilience of black folks in America. He didn't know me from Adam. But he knew that it was okay to tell me the things that he was thinking. It was okay for him to smile. It was okay for him to be a fellow human. He may not have had the words right, but he had the sentiment right. And sometimes we have to think when we say that, that our sentiment is right. But please try it on your words. <laughs> and remember, every person, including you, has within themselves the ability to do good. And every deed has a ripple effect, like throwing a pebble into a lake and continues to grow until you have the full movement of people doing acts of kindness everywhere. Everywhere. Oscar Wilde, I like him, by the way. Oscar Wilde said, the smallest acts of kindness is worth more than the grandest intention. Did you hear that? The smallest acts of kindness is worth more than your grandest intention. And Maya Angelou continues, she said, I think a hero is a person really intent on making this world a better place for all people. For all people. For all people. Not some people, not the people that own land, not the people that own homes, but for all people. 
and Margaret Mead. What a diverse collection of people I found. She never doubts that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever does. What do these very diverse humans have in common? With us here at Govins, we believe and know the importance of intentional kindness. Intentional kindness. I'm just speaking for you because I know you believe it. We seek to practice a persistent faith. We relish in the joys of our fellow congregants, and we are committed by policy and by deed to not only be better ourselves internally, but venturing beyond these walls to do good in this big old bad world. Yes. Amen. I dare to requote, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm daring. I dare to requote quote Mother Teresa, saying so wisely, the good you do today may be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Do it anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never, ever be enough. Give your best anyway. Give your best anyway. For you see, in the end, it's between you and God. It's between you and God. Don't care about what she's saying over here. Don't care about what phone calls she's making over here. Don't care about what emails they send into Leah because she's getting too many. Okay? It's between you and God. It has never been between you and them anyway. Anyway. Go forth, my friends. Give yourself the gift of living a persistent faith. A persistent faith. Embracing joy. Laugh sometimes. Love sometimes. Be sometimes. And seek kindness in this world. Amen.